Welcome everyone to a new gameplay series on Rule the Waves. As a result of our straw poll, which I'll bring up here, we will be playing as Russia, which you may or may not have been able to tell from the uh, thumbnail, which is the, the Russian Empire flag. Uh, you know, with a ship embedded on it, of course, but it was a very close voting session. In fact, Japan was the front runner for probably the majority of the time, but just at the last minute, and I mean really in the last probably half day that I was uh, keeping the poll open, Russia just surged ahead. It was France was, I think, the closest contender for a while, and then just Russia just pulled way ahead um, and just beat Japan by the narrowest of margins, one vote. So th this is the way I think I'm going to set this up. I'll be doing Russia for this series, but just already I can decide I will be doing Japan for my next gameplay series, and that'll probably end up being the last Rule the Wave series that I'll be doing for, you know, a short amount of time. I'll probably take a, a month break or so. I've been doing this Rule the Wave series for the better part of a year now, so, which is because it's so much fun to play. I don't think any other series on my channel has gotten uh, as much playtime, but let's jump into it then. So what are we getting ourselves into? Well, not anything very good. I will be playing with the game naval budget, not the historical one, because this is going to scrunch everyone a little closer together. And I find one of the more frustrating things is when you're in a war with somebody who you just clearly are going to beat, and you're just waiting for their government to collapse. It's obviously a lot more fun if you can compete against people and have, uh, you know, the more even the budgets are, uh, especially if the AI has a slight but um, benefits or, you know, a slight lead on your budget. That's probably makes for one of the, the most fun wars. There are those epic come from behind moments where we fight like Great Britain, which I usually do as my last war of the of the campaign playthrough, because that's like your boss fight, as I always say. Anyways, um, Russia, where does Russia sit in all this? They're decent for their naval budget, which is the best thing going for them. It's not an amazing naval budget. It will be slightly behind Germany, just because we're playing with the uh, game, not the historical. Um, so what I find with the historical is, you, like Italy, people like Italy just get left behind. With the game, they're at 28. With historical, they're only at 10, so it's divided by 3. Most of the nations have a divide by 2 factor for their game historical. Um, we do, France does, Austria-Hungary, Japan. Uh, but a few nations get, you know, worse, the worst end of the deal, which is like Germany and Italy. So we'll be doing the game naval budget just to make hopefully every war entertaining. Undeveloped shipbuilding industry is going to be... Uh, it's just going to result in our ports not being constructed by private industry as much, so we'll have to do a little bit of building ourselves. For autocracy, I should mention that we will be able to exceed any naval disarmament treaties that we get by 10%, not by the gun allotment, but just by the tonnage, so that's a good thing. And poor education is probably what I feel the worst trait in, in the game. This slows down your research, and in this time frame, the whole game, Rule the Waves, is based on the concept of just the designs of ships were so rapidly changing in this era. Uh, research was moving way faster than uh, the shipbuilding could actually take place. So that's the joke about these ships, is that by the time a ship was finished being constructed, it was already obsolete. So uh, 1.32 beta 2 is what we'll be playing with. Um, dock size 50, I just had to mention that because we are updated, but I won't be changing this for the course of the series. So even if, unless there's a major game breaking bug that I, I really feel I should change, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll probably just play with this version for the entire series. Um, dock size 15,000, that's the second best. We're only behind Great Britain and France. I think Italy also has 15,000 and everyone else has smaller docks. So that's one small, we'll, we'll need to take every advantage we can get <laughs> because of this poor education. Bonus tech, this is actually another negative for Russia. Not that having a bonus tech is a bad thing, but it could be in almost anything else and be better. Active Mind Warfare has no impact on the tactical play, the tactical screen. It's just a strategic tool. And it's not very useful, I've found. So it's not even gonna help us until halfway through the game anyway. This is just so much worse than, for example, if we were to have Germany, who has an armor development advantage, subdivision damage control advantage, AP project, you know, even the bonus tech of cross deck fire. These are entire research categories that they get a bonus in throughout the campaign. This is just a single tech, but it, cross deck fire is still way better than active mine warfare. 
I think almost anybody, including um, Austria-Hungary, has a research advantage over Russia. So we can plan on our ships being pretty technologically inferior. We do at least start with 12-inch guns, which means the initial designs will probably be the best we can do for the rest of the campaign. What I mean by that is our initial starting research levels will be equal to everyone else, and we will have 12-inch guns. That's probably the best we'll be able to do in terms of our research level compared to everyone else for the rest of the game. After this, we'll probably just slip further and further behind. So we won't be playing, I, I mentioned Italy, but <laughs> sadly enough, we won't be playing with them because we need to get Japan in there, of course. So I'm looking at these, but we won't be playing with Italy. Um, we'll be playing with Japan because that's a big thing. I think, I don't remember, I, 1902, 1904, something like that was the uh, Russo-Japanese War. So of course they should have that modeled in. So we do have Japan available to us. Okay, so let's get started then. I'm going to be doing very large fleet size. I actually was debating between large and very large. It doesn't make a big difference to me. Sometimes it's actually easier to, to play with a large fleet size just because it's a little less complicated. But because I wasn't able to make a good decision about it, we'll just play with very large. Research rate, I also consider dropping this, but I want to do a playthrough on my own before we do that because I'm not sure how much it'll impact the game. But considering we normally go to like 1935 anyway, this might be one way at least to kind of drag out the research so that we're still doing something significant in that time frame. Although honestly, usually when I go to 1930 or 1935, it's just because I want to get my end game ship that we finally got researched a chance to fight. So maybe research rate would just delay us to like 1940. <laughs> I'm not going to use historical resources for reasons I already mentioned. And we'll be doing manual build of our legacy fleet to try to give us at least some kind of starting edge with um, decent designs for our starting ships. And there we go. We're beginning the game. So today, uh, this episode is probably going to be mostly ship design. And I'm not even sure we're going to do the construction of all the, the different ships because uh, the ship designs themselves are going to take a while. Especially because I'm going to be talking about my design philosophies. And lately when I've been doing the auto design, it's been coming up with... I don't understand why it's coming up with these bug designs. It's... 15,000 is my limit, and it's asking me to build 15,500. And it... Okay, let's see. Does it recognize it? Okay, now we have something that's actually reasonable. Okay, so I'll start with this design. I can already tell that this is not what I'm going to do, because... Design philosophy number one when you're playing as Russia. This is not a rule. This is just my the way I'm going to play this series, I'm going to be sacrificing speed in order to attempt to keep up with armor and armament. Basically, you know, there's the whole triangle of things you can get out of a ship, speed, armor, and armament, and normally you have to sacrifice one for the other two. I try not to sacrifice <laughs> any of them, but when it comes to being as behind as we probably will be with Russia, that's my design decision. So I'm going to expect my ships of the line, so my battleships, my dreadnoughts, to be just a bit slower. The goal here is if we have slightly lower tonnage because of our backwards shipbuilding, and if we have slightly worse technology because of our poor education, hopefully we can still lower the speed enough that our armor and armament is comparable enough that if we get into a broadside to broadside ship of the line, uh, ships of the line versus ships of the line type engagement, we'll be able to hold our own. Now that means we probably won't be able to pursue, and it also means we won't be able to position as well, but those are things I'm gonna have to sacrifice for better armor. Okay, and I, I prefer in general, I should say, a higher speed, because I like the maneuverability. I like the advantage of just maneuvering and trying to gain an advantage there, which is certainly one of the places you can gain an advantage over the AI for. But this will be a little bit different, so we won't be doing that. I'm going to try to push this ship to the limit. We're going to make it a short range ship because um, we only have two main sea zones we want to protect. Northern Europe obviously is our home waters and we'll be sharing that with more than half of the competing nations. Then we also have uh, the water we share with Japan over in Asia. So we'll probably just split some sh battleships off to each of those. And I don't suspect we'll ever have to move our battleships. In fact, we're in a pretty bad shape if we go to war with either France, Germany, or Great Britain because we will be splitting our battleships off, whereas they won't have to, and that probably means they'll blockade us. But 
I don't see any any way around that. So <laughs> gonna go to belt extended three. My philosophy here is I want my belt as high as possible. So we'll probably still make some adjustments to this depending on how much I have left over. And we definitely want quality, or we want caliber 12 inch guns, not 11. Uh, but belt extended, I want to leave it three. I just want this high enough that it'll absorb light cruiser and destroyer shots, and particularly at least destroyer shots. But light cruiser shots would be also nice. Um, so if I lower this to six real fast, we can get the gun data. We can see that at less than, I mean, at anything 5,000 yards or more, six inch guns are unlikely to penetrate my the three inches I have of belt extended. So I'm going to concede the extended part of my belt to heavy ship, heavy shots, but hopefully six inches and under, it'll stop. Two and one is my deck, deck extended. That's perfect because I want two to protect against splinters. Deck extended will not be protected. Basically, it's almost unarmored. Conning tower, let's get this a little bit higher because I prefer my bridges to be protected. I think that should be obvious enough. Um, turrets always, we want to prevent flash fires, although they're, they're pretty rare, I think in the early game. Not until you get like four turrets or three turrets or multiple turrets, cross deck fire, anything like that. Those those are the first times I really start seeing flash fires. And I'll try to remember also if we go to war with Great Britain to decrease the flash fire percentage. Although as Frederick on the forums, he's the main game designer, um, pointed out, most of the ships lost in the Battle of Jutland on the British side were due to flash fires. So it's completely historically accurate. And I'm thankful that he's able to point that out. Just in case you aren't familiar with this game or the game design. Uh, Frederick on the forums is very active. He's the game designer and he listens to your feedback, he responds. It's really awesome. So um, if you haven't considered checking out the game forums, especially if you're already playing, you might want to dive in there and you can gain some useful information. Okay, so let's see. Six inch guns is not what we want now. Let's go back to, to 12. Probably want some more, maybe like 120 rounds per gun. I want to try to get eight or nine six inch guns per side. I think we can do it. Wow, everything seems so good. What am I missing? <laughs> Why is it? I don't want torpedoes on these because I don't want to close the range. These ships are going to be hopefully designed to stay out of range so that we just trade broadsides with people, which is why. Okay, so I guess we can get 10.5. We can get 11.5. 14, maybe 125, 130 even. Wow, we have quite a lot of... Okay, so this is interesting. It looks like very early on I have an opportunity to potentially go up to 19 speed, which is what I was expecting I wouldn't do. Hmm. I'm going to stick with my design philosophy. I'm going to improve the belt instead. And if we can... I don't really care about my secondaries, but now let's at least keep it at 2.5. Nine, nine guns per side is a decent enough affair. So um, with this extra 108, what do we do? Could go just get slightly better turrets. And that looks perfect to me. I like to have a little bit of weight left over just in case we do fire control later. So this is decent, I think. It's very unlikely the top of our ships will be uh, attacked at all, so 2.5 might be even overkill. But this is a very, very well-defended, well-armored ship. And it has the best armament we can get, which is 12 inches. So very good. Um, I should al already apologize for the rest of this series that my pronunciation of Russian names is going to be the best I can do, but not very good. Oh, wow, actually we have I didn't take off the tertiary guns. We can actually get speed of 19, I think. Or what was the other thing I was considering doing? No, I think we can actually just get speed of 19. This is kind of bizarre because I was really not planning on doing this. Um, actually, instead of speed of 19, maybe we should just go for more six inch guns. Although, if I start with 19 now, I can later continue with speed of 19, which won't be as fast. I like that, actually. We'll do speed of 19, we'll make this the main ship of the line speed, and we'll keep it. We won't really go over 19, even when we get to the, the dreadnoughts and such, so that even our pre-war battleships will be able to keep up speed. And it won't be much speed, but at least they'll all be able to keep it up together. 
Okay, so this is going to be the final design. I'm pretty happy about this. Yeah, uh, this is a decent ship. So we'll save this one. We know the short range is going to hurt, but we don't expect these to ever leave the original sea zones. So the Efstafi, and people can go ahead and correct me on pronunciations as they'd like. I prefer that. You know, I'd, I'd like to know how to say it correctly. I don't think it's, um, you know, like a superiority complex or whatever, or inferiority complex if people correct me. So on to the next design. I'm going to go with light cruiser next because my idea for the Russians is to have two ships. One is a light cruiser, which is home water, so also short ranged. And the other one, I guess the one we'll design first because it's forcing my hand here, is going to be my merchant raider, which I want to have a long, reliable engine. This thing is not going to be uh, very well armored. So we'll just go with two, one, four, two for the turret. And it won't even have enough protection against splinters. We'll probably still end up having to do about 6,000 for this. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get... Oh, actually, it looks like we can. If I can, I would like to get... Yeah, okay. I would like to prevent at least splinter damage. So two all around. Deck is the only thing that will take splinter damage. We're going to need more ammo than this. Otherwise, the gun configuration is exactly where I want it. And I think two torpedoes is sufficient for this. It's mainly going to be a merchant raider, so we don't expect it to use torpedoes very often. But I actually like everything about this already. And I don't think we're going to change anything. Very good. Okay, so let's save this one. Let's actually go up on ammo. We'll be able to lower that. Oh my gosh, actually we're way over tonned then. Let's just drop this down a little bit, see what we can get. I think we can get it to 5,500. Okay, we can get it to 5,300. Very good. And maybe take this up a couple more. Well, that's plenty. I don't think we'll ever need more than 200 ammo, especially this is our Merchant Raider. Um, shoot. I, it's, uh, it almost looks like it's possible to get 2.5 for belt, but no, let's just leave it as is. This is fine. Everything is set. Actually, this is f costing us 46. Yeah, it's not quite enough to get the next one. Although, if we lower this to 180, which is more reasonable, and now added 46, we're just about there. Do I want to increase the belt? I think so. Actually, I'd like to increase the conning tower too, but no, I think belt to 2.5. Let's look at what our gun data is. 2.5 actually does seem to be a big difference between 2 and 2.5, so let's go ahead and try for that. That'll make these things a little more resilient. Clear our torpedoes. These are not going to be the ships that are going to be supporting my battle fleet anyway, so that's why I don't mind. They're supposed to be fast enough to just get out of the way of anything. Um, but torpedoes, we don't, I don't think we need them. Okay, I'm making the decision. We don't need them, and we'll increase this. This is perfect. We'll lower this rounds per gun when we get better fire control. Um, but for now, actually, I'll just lower this to 185 so we have a little bit of weight left over. And there we go, the Flora is going to be our long distance raiding light cruiser. We'll build one. And now let's go ahead and design our support light cruiser. What I'm expecting to happen is the Flora is going to be flung, like completely leave home waters, so that I don't even have a chance of pairing her with my um, battleships. That's the idea. Now the Vesta, which we've got for the next name, is going to be my battle line light cruiser. This is very ambitious already. I think I still want at least 22 out of this, although I like what they've done with the conning tower. So we want two and two. We don't want secondary guns. I think we'll keep this configuration because it's a little too hard to get off. Um, I think it's a little too hard to get off more than a five sided broadside for these ships. We're going to want more ammo anyways, probably 170, 180. I'll keep it at 170. Let's just drop this down to 2.5. These are going to be short range, which is going to save us all that. So, wow, we can really get this up to 23 then. Perfect. That's what I wanted. <clears throat> Normal priority is fine. Coal, short, 5,200. I'm going to keep freeboard at normal the entire time. I'm also not going to select colonial service for any of my ships. Um, I, this increases the effect of deploying the ship on foreign station, but I'd rather have more ships 
literally there. I don't want my ships to represent more tonnage than they are because then my tonnage is inflated. Um, like it may pretend that I have 4,000 tons at whatever place, but I actually only have 3,000, for example. Well, I'd rather just not pay for the extra colonial service tonnage and have two ships there because they're gonna fight a lot better. Colonial service doesn't help your, um, doesn't help your ship fight any better. In some sense, it makes it a little bit worse. So this one, we do want to have torpedoes. In fact, I think I want four torpedoes on this one because in the beginning of the game, you don't use torpedoes very much. It's a very underdeveloped technology, but light cruisers are typically the ones I find that launch torpedoes. So we'll be trying to take advantage of that. <clears throat> okay, I think everything's good. Well, let's try to get 2.5 for the turret. Ooh, it's gonna be difficult. Well, maybe we'll just raise the tonnage. I think for this ship, it's the one time it's worth the exception to raise the tonnage to get exactly what we want, because this will be our frontline ship. Okay, very good. I think this is fine. Unfortunately, I hear the leaf blower going in the background, so I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> they, they know exactly what I'm trying to record, and then they, they make sure to make noise. Yeah, so we'll build one of these. And now I'll design my heavy cruiser. Well, actually, let's start with the minesweeper because that one's going to be very simple. We're going to go down to 200, speed of 17. Um, a trick which still hasn't been patched, thank God, is you can get armor on these and make them almost as good as your destroyers. So using this, um, medium range is fine. We can make these even reliable, I found. We can get to 10, I think, to 15 is the break off for the next thing in weight. So these are 200 medium range, 17 speed. They actually have armor. And this is the design I'm using for the entire series. We'll never upgrade it. We'll retrofit it, but we will just save it exactly back to what it was. And that is our minesweeper, the Vestnik. Okay, so we'll build one of those. So we have one of each of our designs. The two things we're missing now are destroyers and like our heavy cruisers. I, before the last series with Austria-Hungary, I wasn't a big fan of heavy cruisers, but now my, <laughs> my eyes have been opened. The Sankt George was an amazing display of force. Oh boy, Pamyat Azava? Oh boy, these names are going to be difficult. Yeah, and again, just feel free, free to correct me. It's still auto-designing designs which we can't build. We don't have the technology for the... Wait, I'm pretty sure we don't have the technology... Oh, we do have technology for side turrets only up, up to six inches. So if I go up to seven inches, it's going to say no. Yeah, there it is. We can only build up to seven inch turrets on the wings. And I'm going to want this to have probably nine inch guns because anything less than that will give me a penalty. So we'll just do double forward and aft nine inch guns. Just a mini, uh, dread, a, a mini battleship, basically. So that looks a little better. Okay, so on the sides, we want to try to get as many 5-inch guns as possible. I'm going to make it 5-inch instead of 6-inch. The reason is 9 and 6 are so close together, I feel like it's a bit redundant. So to save us a little space and still make us as effective, maybe even more effective against destroyers, I'm going to be using 5-inch guns. I want only two torpedoes on this. That's fine. The weight is a little bit low. I'm, I'm happy to go up to 10,000 with these. So we'll try to get 4.5 and 2 is fine. Uh, conning tower should be about seven turrets of five and two is fine zero for my secondaries no i want two for my secondaries if possible and we're a bit overweight 22 is the speed that i wanted let's go up to 10,000. okay we don't even need to go up to 10,000, but we probably want to get a little bit more ammo yeah actually this is more than we need though so 9800 I kind of like to look for min-max plateaus. Let's see how much it drops. So 164. Okay, it dropped by 70. And it dropped by 40 this time, which means that that's, uh, if we wanted to go to 10,000, that's a good one. We gain 70. But we only gain about 40 or 50 doing this jump, which is not as good. And let's see what this last one is. Another one, which is actually just 40 itself. So let's try to get 9,700. I don't think we'll be able to do it. No, we'll do 9,800, even though it's somewhat inefficient. 
because I want to increase my conning tower and get this ammo up a little bit more. 165 is probably okay. We have seven guns per side, so two and seven. Okay, well, let's see. How much do we need to get eight? I prefer eight. Yeah, we can get eight, and now we can get a few more rounds. Okay, this is a good ship. Maybe even get our conning tower up to 8.5. We can't do turret, can we? We're close to doing turret. How much do we have to drop? Okay, I think this is okay. It is possible for your... Um, heavy cruisers have flash fires too, so that's going to protect us a bit more. Again, we don't expect the turret top to be hit at all, so that's why I'm kind of sacrificing that. Although, you know what? We could do this, this, and get some more ammo. Yeah, we're really min-maxing min a little too much. I'm going to leave it at 175. That should be more than enough. These I want to have medium range, everything normal. That's perfect, so that they have the ability to leave my home waters, but only if I need them to. Okay, so that's the Palm Yacht. Azova, with uh, your pronunciation corrections, welcomely accepted. Okay, that's it. So I think that's everything we want to do for this turn. You'll notice there's one thing I haven't built, which is a destroyer. I'm going to build one single destroyer, just to satisfy the naysayers, but I'm not going to build any other ones. The one that you see here is going to actually be the one that we actually build, and that's it. Because I don't like destroyers, I don't find them useful in the beginning game, remember, we usually, at least if you're like me, you typically think of destroyers as escorts, but destroyers were more scouts um, or kind of like patrol boats, home water patrol boats, more than they were escorts until into the 1920s when you started to develop the destroyer escort role. So just keep that in mind that the destroyers are not really supposed to be escorting your ships to the line. That was the role for light cruisers until it was developed later um, in, the 19, in the 20th century. So 27 is nice and fast, that's good. Short range, well sure, because we don't expect this to see very much action. We'll go for speed because the destroyers, we don't really care when they have problems. We can't use armor for destroyers. We won't use cramped because I think that has the possibility to affect your um, unrest level. So we'll try to avoid that. Otherwise, we want at least two turrets, so let's get one fore, one aft. How are we doing? And then obviously the main uh, thing you want your torpedoes to have is, I mean your destroyers to have is, um, actually I think this is already too many. Yeah, we have too many centerline and torpedo mounts, so we're going to have to, I'm going to delete these and go, clear mounts, sorry. We'll just go to one on each side, which doesn't decrease the total number of torpedoes we have, it just decreases the number we can fire per side. So I think my typical design, I'm not even gonna bother making my triangle f configuration because you're allowed to have three in line. I'm just gonna go with one on each side uh, because I think I typically go with four inch, three inch guns and I'm gonna try to get four inch on this. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, we don't have a quality one bonus for three inch guns. So let's try to do this instead. Let's go port side, starboard side. Okay, that's good. And we actually have enough weight to get one more, which I'm surprised by. Can we get a faster ship? I'd prefer that. Weight remaining. We still have enough for one more torpedo even. But we want more ammo. Okay, can we do this? Can we get one more center line in? Yeah, we can't even have triple. So it looks like we can only have two. So I'll go ahead and delete this one again. It put us overweight anyway. All right, well, that's fine. We'll just take off this, we'll go to normal. Oh, wow, that makes a huge difference. We will not do that. Oh, okay, we'll get to 29 then. And we'll try to leave this with one left over. So 205 will be our gun allotment. And there we go. That's gonna be our, oh boy. I don't even wanna try my Bernie class. <laughs> our Bernie class ship. So there we go. I don't think there's anything else we need to do. Um, this is not a bad destroyer. It only has the two torpedoes. But like I said, uh, destroyers this early in the game, they're likely as not to die on their way to target. Or just, I find that it's very difficult to use them effectively. So I won't be building too many of these. Okay, let's save that, build one of them. And then I'm gonna call this video to a close because we're already about the 30 minute level and I'm gonna just build the rest of the ships off camera. And I wanna think about it for a moment. 
I'll come back on and I'll tell you, well, you'll see how many ships I built. The only thing we really have to consider is, oh no, I, yeah, okay. We have to keep as close to 24 million as we can because in the next phase, we're gonna be building ships that are still halfway under construction, but we're gonna get them for half price. So we wanna to try to take as much advantage of that as possible. Okay, so if you want to be a ship captain, you don't have to leave your name in this video, but you can if you already decide I want to be part of the Pamyat Azova group. Um, you can just say I'd like to captain one of those and I will replace the name of whatever heavy cruiser we have and your name will go there instead. You'll be the new captain. Um, since this is the first video in the series, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like or thumbs up, especially if you want to see more of this series, that'd be helpful just to increase my ratings on YouTube. Otherwise, People who watch my channel know I never asked for that. And what else do I want to say? I guess that's it. So stay tuned for episode two, and I'll see you back for then when we will actually begin the game. <laughs>